Welcome back, everybody. My name is Kikiki Coffee Break, and I am here with game number three between Moose Morrow and Moose Mana from NASL Season 2. We have Morrow spawning here in the top right position as the Red Zerg player, and down in the lower left, we have Moose Mana, who is currently down 0 and 2 in this best of five series. So Mana, if he wants to stay in this and try to play yet another game against his teammate, he will have to win this one, otherwise he will be eliminated, and I do not know if that would mean that he drops down to the loser's bracket or what. Now this map is a little bit interesting. <coughs> we do see that the main ramp to the base, to, to your main base, is currently, uh, in, in Protoss terms, it is one force field wide, and it's also blocked off by this destructible debris, so if the Zerg player decides to take down this debris, he would have a very large opening to get into the Protoss base. However, you also have kind of a half base sitting over here that has six mineral patches and one rich Vespian geyser. As opposed to your standard seven, no, eight. Okay, I, I thought it was eight. As opposed to your standard eight mineral patches and two normal Vespian geysers. <clears throat> so it's easy to take a second base. However, it, uh,. It's kind of a half base. It's kind of a half base. I don't know how much vet rich Vespian guys will return. I think it's seven, just like a rich, uh, a rich mineral patch. But do not quote me on that. So we do see there are quite a few bases here. Morrow once again going for this spawning pool before hatchery and before extractor. Just the way that he likes to do it. Really, you can do any one of the three: hatchery first, spawning pool first, or extractor first. It just depends on what you want to get going. If you're a really, really heavy macro zerg, you're probably going to get this hatchery first. If you like to take a little bit of map control, just play a little bit safer. Probably extractor or pool or pool first is the better option. I believe I explained that in my earlier games. Uh, a lot of larvae sitting here waiting for that, uh, waiting for that spawning pool to hatch. And we are currently sitting at 16 of 18 supply, and he's not really using these two larvae for anything. I'd imagine that he'd want to get kind of, kind of get going on that. I see that he is low on minerals. That's not too big of a deal, though. I suppose that you can let that larva just sit back and relax for a while, because it will be busy. In the meantime, we do have Mana taking a quick second of its own. A gateway actually going down at the front of his base instead of a forge. That's interesting I would say I would say the least power this can be blocked off by two buildings if he does see Zerglins coming he can quickly throw it out a second gateway or a forge there I don't think that this is too big of a deal this is just kind of a a differing build order it's really just a choice thing we are going to see the Cybernetics core down go down right there and one thing a lot of Protoss players have been doing is you can either build a pylon here and that completes the wall off, and then when you want to get out of your base, you can just destroy that pylon. It's a very, very cheap investment, and it's not much lost. Or, of course, you can just put your standard zealot right between the rocks and the cybernetic core, and that will complete your wall off as well. Our second bases are completed for both of our players now, and we've seen Morrow just do some heavy, heavy joining in the past two games, so I would imagine that we'd see him do that once again here. And... I'd actually expect to see Mana do that as well, as he has lost twice now. He probably wants to just play a nice, safe game. Probably doesn't want to try to do anything risky, because once again, lose this and he loses the series. So I'd expect to see a nice long match game out of both players. This is a fairly large map. A fairly large map. I actually forgot to look at the name, which is why I've been avoiding saying it the entire time. So I will go ahead and put that in the comments. There we go. Now here's our first bit of tech. We do have a Stargate on the way for our Protoss player. Going to need to be careful of these Overlords positioning though. He does not want the Zerg player to see that before he is ready. And I just noticed something. In the last couple games I've noticed that Mara has gotten supply blocked at 36. That just looks to be part of his build as that has happened multiple times now. So that's just part of his build. That is no big problem. Yeah, you can see he's spurting out eight drones at a time, as well as finishing up his metabolic boost. And is there an opening here? I guess there is an opening here. That's... Well, I guess I understand the wall off, because if the Zerg player does decide to take the debris down, then the Protoss is still fairly well positioned, uh, building-wise. Stargate has now finished another eight drones on the way for our pro uh, for our third player. Yes, our Protoss player is now making drones. Mana does a very good job deflecting that Overlord, the top Overlord. There's still an Overlord down here on the bottom, but it is quite a ways away from that Stargate. 
I feel Mana could deal with that before it actually gets anything scouted. In fact, if you, as you can see the rally point here, that's not a very good rally point for uh, for being able to see anything scouting wise. Looks like our Zerg player will go ahead and take his, uh, what I would assume would normally be his natural expansion, but in this case it is going to be his third. I suppose the Zerg player did want the full eight mineral patches. As we see he's not doing a gas heavy build at all. Just now taking those two geysers at 62 supply. My goodness. Now this Overlord is getting into the base and he, now he has seen the Stargate. So he's going to know exactly what's going on. He's even going to be able to see that he might have even seen the Phoenix pop out of that Stargate. So our Zerg player is going to be able to react to this in time as he do need multiple phoenixes to be able to do any sort of damage and we do see of course a couple of spine crawlers being dropped down down we do actually have a void ray all the way uh, already over here at the second base of Morrow poking around a little bit killing that spore or not the spore crawler that was a creep colony not a creep colony I am not uh, I, I'm not looking at a brood war game here that was a creep tumor coming out of our zerg player there killed by the void ray 74 to 76 to 76 supply. Very even for both of these players right now. Another 10 drones just now hatching for Morrow. He is going super, super macro heavy. And there is nothing wrong with that. Now, this Void Ray is trying to poke in. However, there are Sport Crawlers in position to defend against that. Now, he's kind of in a bad position. That Queen could take a couple shots at him. It looks like one Overlord might get sacked here. That's not too big of a deal, though. As the Zerg player kind of just expects to lose a couple of Overlords in a lot of situations. It looks like this Void Ray might be in a little bit of trouble there. Very nice control, though. Shooting while moving. That's actually rather difficult to control. And now trying to take out a couple more overlords. Now it's a little bit more of a supply block going down. Zerg player is losing quite a few overlords here. Now three phoenixes do swoop in and begin helping out with these overlords. A fourth overlord falls out. Three supply blocking Mara. He has lost four overlords. Recreated three, but that is not enough. It looks like a queen now is going to go down as well. And we do have a couple of extra queens. Three extra queens coming in off of creep to try to do a little bit of damage. And now these overlords very smartly pooping their creep so that... They can re the queens can reinforce the bases more quickly. We do have a very, very quick fourth coming out of Morrow here, as well as a macro hatch somewhere. Looks like these Phoenix is just being a little bit pesky over here in the main. A spore crawler is going up as well as an infestation pit, which is extraordinarily good. Infestation is very, very powerful versus any sort of airplay coming out of low cost. And yet another overlord calls. That is a, this is going to probably turn into five overlords, maybe even a Six. We do have a spore crawler running up here. That is a building, so it cannot be lifted by the graviton beam of the Phoenix. Looks like they may even get a seventh overlord before finally having to fly out due to those spore crawlers. My goodness, what beautiful harass out of mana. However, the thing about getting these Stargate plays is that a lot of the time, your ground army is going to be that much weaker. We do have Colossus coming out for our, uh, our Protoss player now. But comparatively speaking, um... Actually, he's sitting in a relatively nice position as there are only two Zergs down on the field right now. I believe that is 86 drones for our Zerg player. Definitely saturated with that many units out on the field. Picking up a lot of drones even now. Picking those off. These Phoenixes being super, super pesky. There are currently only three Phoenix, I believe, on the field. Indeed, only three. Generally, the money number is five because that allows you to pick up a queen and kill it without it ever having to drop. Zerglings just running around the field, scouting out, taking map control, and looking like they will get that poor hapless zealot. He goes down instantly. However, the entire Proton Ball is there to defend, to push those Zerglings back. It looks like these Phoenixes have now come back, regenerated their shields, and going out once again for another swooping attack to do a little bit more damage. We do have yet another half base up for our Zerg player. There are a lot of half bases on this map. I'm really surprised that the GSL, uh, NASL would put this many half bases on in one of their maps. However, that is not a big concern right now because we do have Phoenixes coming in and picking up these investors who do have enough energy for fun growth, but are just kind of sitting back and taking it. Meanwhile, this Overseer is overseeing absolutely nothing going on in that main, nothing that he didn't really already know. We do have Colossus on the field as well as Extended Thermal Lands. Nine Corruptors on the way for our Zerg player. He's going to be well, well prepared for this Protoss army. However, nine Corruptors for only one Colossus, about to be second Colossus, and a few Phoenixes 
that's a little bit of an overproduction, I feel. We don't have Hive Tech down on the field yet, so no Broodlords can be created out of those Corruptors. I believe our Zerg player might just be uh, hoping to make one round of Corruptors and then be done with those. We do have these Phoenix just continuing to be pesky, taking map control all around. We are now at 171 to 166 supply, just slightly in favor of our Zerg player making more Corruptors. I wonder if he is planning on going up to Broodlord Tech. I would imagine so as he now is giving his hive. We do have uh, Infester, Corruptor, Ling right now. It looks like a few roaches being popped out as well just to help uh, bring up the supply count just a little bit. Help with any future engagement coming up shortly. It looks like our Zerg player is beginning to move out a little bit across the map off creep. So I do believe that he is getting ready to, an, to attack. As generally you do not want to be off creep unless you have a purpose for it. This observer is moving out across the field. It'll likely see this Zerg army unless that Zerg army pulls back right about now. No, indeed, that observer is going to fly straight over that army. Zerg being going to be taken out there. And Morrow's got to be got to be fairly happy with the position he's in. He has had that fourth base quite a bit longer than our Proton player has. In fact, our Proton player only now laying down his fourth base. And it's not exactly a late fourth base, but considering that Morrow's had his fourth base for quite a bit longer, it really, that, that really kind of an evening factor right there. Looks like the, our Zerg player is going to be taking down the rock to get into the the third base of Mana. And the, the Protoss army is back to defend against this. Uh, Mauro is going to want to back up. That's not going to be good position for him. Trying to get these Corruptors in position to take out a Colossus too. There are currently 12 Corruptors on the field. That's a lot of Corruptors. And there we are. Our Greater Fire is on the way. As well as Ground Carapace. And oh, a little, a little bit of Zergling attack over here at the fourth base not doing any damage though probably just freeing up supply as once again we do have a great respire on the way for those brood boards melee attack level three on the way for our zerg player as well as ground carapace level two blinking forward is mana to take out the fourth base of mara and it looks like he's actually going to get this as there's nothing back here to defend the entire zerg army is out of position over somewhere i can't even really find it somewhere within the main area of mara's base it looks like this entire base is going to be mopped up by Mono, so there was a free base for him. He's got to be fairly happy with that. But there are a lot of corruptors on the field. They can pick off these bosses almost instantly. I believe forward by all the shockers. However, there's so many corruptors on the field that it doesn't really matter. He should not take them out fast enough. And the corruptors having done their duty, eight corruptors remaining, only losing four in that battle, do fall back after that. A lot of stalkers being warped in for our Protoss player. A lot of Zerglings being warped in for our Zerg player. I'm surprised we aren't seeing a lot more roaches as the, as, as the really popular build right now for uh, Zergs is Roach Corruptor, uh, not Roach Corruptor, Roach Infestor Brute Lord. I always get Infestor and Corruptor mixed up. I do not know why. But that's because the Brutelings a lot of the time will do fulfill the role of a, a, of a semi tank. They hold the, the ground forces of the opponent back. And that allows the roaches to get free shots off and allows the uh, infestors to get fungal growths down to stop stalkers from blinking forward, stop the army from trying to kite away from the brood lords. But Zerglings, not necessarily a bad idea either. I don't think they have a adrenal plan there, which is the faster attack speed. Sacking a few more links there by accident. It looks like there might be a little bit more of engagement here. You're not going to want to quite engage right yet because the process player does have fairly good positioning on that ramp. The Zerg player would not be able to get this round. Now we do have these eight Broodlords pushing forward a little bit. And there's the blink forward by the Stalkers forcing the blink forward with those Broodlords. Now we do have Fungal Rose going down on the Stalkers, but they can no longer bring the blink forward. However, these Broodlords are fairly close to the engagement. The Stalkers will be able to continue picking away at them. But no, it looks like there was no focus fire on the Broodlords. So the Stalkers just getting named in that battle. Grand weapon level 3 on the way that I don't know if Ma Mana's going to get a chance to do that. And it is currently 182 to 153 supply. A lot of Broodlings out on the field. We do have only two Broodlords left, however. One very, very low on health. We can only take one more shot at one health. Literally one health left on that Brute Lord. However, these uh, cannons are not being seized by the Brute Lord. And Roaches. These investors completely out of energy. It is a shame they are not Templars. Because then they can morph into Archons. Dropping down that single infested Terran. Because why not? You can do whatever you can do. And that is always helpful. The Roach is pushing a little bit further forward. As well as the Brute Lord's take on a few extra Stalkers. And it looks like we do have some Stalker reinforcements coming up. And I do not see any reinforcements quite yet out of Morrow. 13 roaches are on the way, however. That is exactly what he wants to produce right now to quickly reinforce his army. The fourth base does fall for Mana. The Zerglings just doing so much damage. Once again, I do not think they are Cracklings. They do not quite have that Adrenal Glands upgrade. But they do have the Metabolic Suit making them very, very quick on the ground. Where is the spawning pool? 
I guess adrenal glands, if you're going to do any sort of uh, heavy, heavy Zerglings play in the late game, you always want to get adrenal glands. Once again, that just reduces the attack speed of the Zerglings by 20%, which is a lot, and a little bit of a glitch that, uh, that infested Terran's feet were not moving. It looks like we're going to be seeing yet another engagement here, being relentless right now, further growing that Void Ray and dropping a couple infested Terrans underneath it to be able to finish it off. That Void Ray is going nowhere. Meanwhile, another fungal growth going down on all the Stalkers and Zealots and Colossus of Mana to hold those in position while the Zerglings get the ground and the Roaches just bust up onto them. That Colossus is going to once again fall. A few more Corruptors being remade now, more likely than not, to make some more Brood Lords. 150 to 107 supply. Morrow, definitely, definitely coming out on top in that last engagement. Morrow's got to be feeling pretty good. It looks like we are going to be seeing three Phoenixes. There's three Phoenixes broken around in the game. Just gotta run up, pick off an Infestor, but at what cost they do lose one Phoenix. And that Infestor is going to go down now. And it looks like this fourth base for Mana was finally cancelled. So after quite a passive game, we are finally getting into it. Carapace level 3 on the way, as well as finally some Missile Attack for those Roaches. Massive amount of upgrade for Morrow. Very, very good keeping on top of that. Three more Broodlords now on the way. Our Protoss player, his upgrades are nothing to scoff at either, and I wouldn't say our Protoss player is quite out of the game yet, however he is beginning to look a little bit shady, he's only mining out of one base, that is a full base however, so he's mining out of one full base right now, all the pros being transferred over, that's not going to do him any good, he cannot get any more saturated here, that is three pages worth of probes on one base on just one base our Zuri is up to five bases, these phoenixes are sitting overhead of base number five, but they are unable to do anything because they are out of energy for that graviton beam. And my goodness, what an awesome game we've had so far out of these two players. And Morrow looks like he's just content sitting back trying to finish up macroing up his army. And what is this? We have a mothership on the way now for our Protoss player because when you are down and out, you can do two things at a Protoss player. One of them is to get a mothership and vortex the army, and the other one, of course, is to get DTs, which I actually got just destroyed by last night after I had a protest player up against the wall. I was very, very frustrated with that. Nonetheless, though, nonetheless, moving on, it is 190 to 142 supply in Mara's favor. He has quite the lead, and oh my goodness, like I was just saying, a mothership or DTs, and if you're really far behind, why not get both? Mana must be must be feeling a little bit iffy here. He's beginning to run out of resources, however. Once again, he's only mining off of one base, and it is getting mined out fast. He is going to be re he's required to re to establish another expansion here if he wants to have any sort of chances of coming back in this game. Otherwise, he's just going to have to pull all his probes and all in, taking out these Zerglings here that were here to scout out when the fourth base goes down. So Mara is going to have a fairly good idea that this is about to happen. However, all these Zerglings swarming in now, taking down these three Stalkers, and every single unit is so important. This uh, probe is not going to be very happy with being over here right now. Our mothership has finished. We do have Ultralis on the way, as well as finally the Adrenal Glands upgrade for those Zerglings. We are seeing every single unit in this game. We've seen... Every unit but the carrier, I think, and High Templars out of mana so far. Archons are a possibility, as we do have this Dark Shrine on the way. And Hydralisks haven't come out, I guess, for mana. Uh, pardon me, for Morrow. Looks like we are going to have some Zerglings attacking themselves, running into the main, just kind of seeing what's going on. A very nice warping right there to stop the Zerglings from getting into the main base, because that just would have been plain flat out annoying. It looks like we are going to be having a couple of DDs harassing the uh, army of Morrow. They are not going to be able to do too much damage as there are these spore crawlers here to detect those. Morrow just happy with sneaking out across the map. He knows that he has the macro advantage in this game. Now up to a sixth base over here in the top left corner. So he's happy with just spreading his creep out across the map. That will allow him to reinforce his army very, very quickly when the final battle does come. And I don't really know if there's much Mana can do in this game. I suppose that he could vortex the army and try to get a couple Archons in that uh, in that mixture there. But I don't know if it's going to quite be enough. We are seeing a lot of probes being pulled off now. Do we have... Oh my goodness, that's just annoying. We do have a couple of Zerglings burrowed where that next would normally go down. Adrenal Glance has a finish. We do have Tightness Plating coming out for the Ultra now, which gives them an extra two armor extra two or three armor uh if you're going ultralisk it's one of those upgrades that you kind of just may as well get where is it? there it is plus two armor for those ultras plus the already three 
get north, they're going to have five armor total. But it looks like we are going to finally see our big game here. There's ultras did get in the front, which is a very, very good position for them, obviously. The Vortex not in the best positioning, however, kind of getting under those Brood Lords. Uh, did manage to pull all those Brood Lords in, and it looks like Mara actually lost quite a bit in that engagement. Now pulling the rest of the army back into that army, out into that Vortex. However, he's already back up to 200, 200 supply, now dropping down as soon as that Vortex finished. There are five, six Brood Lords wailing away at anything left on the ground in these Ultras just pushing through super hard, and there's the GG for Mana in game number three in this best of five series. Finally able to take the series after another long macro game. What? Wow, the, I mean, the, all three of those games, none of them were gimmies by Mana. He fought to the very end, tooth and nail, and I really liked the Mothership play. That was, a, that was a great idea, trying to get that Vortex. Unfortunately, he did not get the Vortex in quite the right positioning. Was not able to pull in uh, the, all of the Broodlords or any of the Ultralisks, which are really the two units that he needed to focus on getting in. So he could fo focus on the lesser minions before taking out the, the larger creatures. Ending the game at 186 to 87 supply. What three beautiful macro games. If you guys do not know how to play PvZ or ZvP, these are three great games to look at. Just watch the players. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much for joining me here on the Coffee Cast. I have got to go because I actually had a friend walk in like five minutes into this cast, and I should probably, you know, go up and let him know it's all right to come down. We are going to be playing Dungeons and Dragons. That is right. I am an ultra nerd. I am playing StarCraft II and Dungeons and Dragons tonight on a Saturday night. Yay. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Coffee Break, and I am signing out.